One ingredient food challenges can really help you on your keto journey and they can be a lot of fun. Well, they're a lot of fun if you are in charge of picking that one ingredient. But what happens if you leave that one ingredient up to chance? We're gonna find out. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is 2crazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way every single time we prove why we're called the Two Crazy Ketos you'll be alerted to it. So recently, a lot of people have been doing one ingredient food challenges, and we have done them in the past. We've done keto chow, we've done keto brick, we've done Eggs. egg fast. I mean, we've done a lot of them over the last five years of this channel, and sometimes they can be fun, sometimes not. <laughs> and they can benefit you because yes. you can it's a quick let me get away from everything else right it is an elimination type of protocol so if you've been like getting into the weeds when it comes to carb creep if you have been relying too much on something like uh whipped cream or you've gotten into cheese land too deep and you're trying to get out of it purposing in your heart, hey, I'm going to do a challenge for a couple of days where I am just not going to eat right. those things can really help to reset your mind. Yeah. Now, this is not an elimination thing like beef, butter, bacon, and egg. That is a true right. elimination diet. Like the lion diet, that is a true elimination because you're doing it for a minimum of 30, 60, or 90 days to get everything out of your system and truly figure out what works best for your body. These single ingredient food challenges, like for two or three days, they're more of like a reset, like get the heavy whipping cream out right. for three days and then come back. And hopefully you come back with not having as much as you were prior to the three days. Exactly. Because I think that what happens is we get into a mindset of, I can't go without this item. And if we can get on the other side of a three day or five day challenge, then we've proven that that statement is not correct because we managed to live without it for a couple of days. The only problem with these single ingredient food challenges with us, we can't ever decide or we can't ever agree, agree on what it should be because Rachel is fine eating sardines. I'm not. I'm fine eating chicken legs. She's not. No. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a five day single ingredient food challenge and we're going to turn to the wheel, wheel of misfortune. Because there are some things on here that neither one of us want to eat. Like, and it's different. Yeah. So, so we're going to do things a little different. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to spin the wheel. And we're going to do this for five days. We're not going to do five days of whatever it lands on. We're going to do each day we are going to spin the wheel and whatever it lands on is the only thing that both of us can eat on the that, next day. Okay. So, for so we're going to spin it at night. Okay. So we're going to spin today mm -hmm. for tomorrow. Okay. That will give me enough time to make sure we have all of the food we need for that day, whether it be pull it out of the freezer or start preparing it or go to the grocery store because... Some of the things on here, you don't we like. don't have. But I think it's funny that you only want to do a single ingredient. Like, each day is its own autonomous day. Like, you don't want to take a risk that you're going to get sardines for five straight days. Well, it, it, I think it's more fun this way. Okay. It's just more fun because we are eliminating, even though we're going to change it up every day, we are eliminating a lot of things. We're gonna yes. We're going to go over all of the rules in a second okay. of what the rules are for this. But pretty much, 
what it lands on, that's what we can have. Like nothing in addition. So if you get eggs, you can't have cheese on your eggs. I can't have cheese on the eggs. So, I can't have ketchup on my eggs. Wow. So like, if you get chicken wings, it's basically like... We're, we're going to talk about Okay. It. Wow. So you want to go over what we have on here? Because yes. again, not an autofocus camera up here. And so I want to go over what's on here. So there's 14 slots, five days. So chances are we're going to get something we don't like. So we have keto chow. Okay. So do you want to go over each one, what we're allowing on each one, and then we'll sum up the rules at the end? Yeah. So keto chow, I would say keto chow must be made with butter. All right. Right? Mm -hmm. Um. Or do you, anything but heavy whipping cream, or do you just want to do butter? Make it easy. Just butter. Ma just butter. And, and it could be a shake, or it could be ice cream. But if you have an ice cream, it can't have a no mix No mix-ins. No mix-ins. So straight up, keto chow, no extras, no mix-ins. Just keto chow. You can't even turn it into pudding. No, because that would involve another ingredient. That's right. Okay, so the only fat source can be butter. Okay. And it can be as a shake or as an ice cream. All right. And that, that is all you get for the day. Okay. Okay? And you can add as much butter if you want. If you want to add eight tablespoons of butter, that's fine. Okay? Chicken wings. I love chicken wings. I love chicken wings. We eat chicken wings a lot, but for this purpose, if you're not adding a mix in to keto chow, you're going to have to do chicken wings with like butter and salt and that's it. I'd say, okay, so let's pause right here. So we're going to go butter is, I would say fat source can be any animal fat. Yeah, like you could, you could. So you can use butter. Beef tallow. tallow lard. Any kind of, so it's got to be an animal fat source for yeah. anything we have. Only animal fat sources. Okay. So no coconut oil, no avocado oil. With the exception of the keto brick, because I see keto brick is over here. Okay. Well, yeah. So, well, keto brick is, we can only eat keto brick. So there is no other fat source. Right. Um, seasonings. How about only seasonings from Redmond? I like that because I'm going to get more than salt. So I'm going to get like chili you lime, You can have taco. salt, no pepper. Yep. Oh, no pepper, right? Salt and Redmond seasoning. seasoning. So like you could get Organic their... garlic pepper. Okay. You can use Redmond seasoned salt. You can use lemon pepper. Um, you can use the barbecue. I would say no barbecue because barbecue's got a sweetener in it. It's got allulose in it. Redmond's, I am counting on you to bring out some flavor this. this week. Salmon. salmon. Which I love, but you do not love. So that means when we cook the salmon, you can have it, well, you can have it raw. Like a sashimi. Yeah, but no, but no, like you can have butter, soy sauce to nope, dip it in. Butter and Redmond seasoning. Okay, no, and that's the Parmesan. only thing you can eat for the day. Yeah, is salmon, bacon, or pork belly. Or, well, pork belly is is bacon. bacon. I am praying that we land on that. Eggs. Wow. So this one's gonna be only tough. eggs. Yeah, because last time we did an egg fast for multiple days, which you hated already, but you were able to make deviled eggs. You were able to make an egg well, loaf. Because you were able to eat cheese. A lot of people do an egg fast where you have like uh, a tablespoon of butter per egg and an ounce of cheese. That's how we did it years ago. Why is that on there? Sardines. It has to be. It has to be on there. You have to try it. You have to try that for a whole day if you can do it. But no mayonnaise. Like I'm screwed too. Okay. So sardine, only sardines and Redmond seasoning. That's it. Okay. And like a fat, if you want. Ground beef. I hope we land on this. I hope it's like we have five days. I can days, do ground beef every day. Ground beef and then a day of bacon and pork belly. Like, I'll be set. Sh Ooh, that would be a boring day. Shrimp? Oh, I love shrimp. Shrimp? But only no, shrimp. No cocktail sauce. No cocktail sauce. I mean, I could cook it in butter and that would be delicious. But no garlic. No garlic. No parmesan. Like, I would want like shrimp scampi. Okay, this one was my idea. Yes. Bread and butter fast. What? And the bread Obviously. is only like the protein sparing bread. And we will use Indigo Neely's butter bread recipe. If Thank we God. Those. Okay. Yes. So not the original. We will use the butter bread recipe from Indigo. So that does have multiple ingredients. 
Uh, we will not use the arrow root. We don't ever use the arrow root. Right. But so, but the only thing we're going to eat that whole day would be bread and butter. Bread, and then we can put butter on top of it. Lamb. This is new. This is very new. Uh, like, so it could be ground lamb. Ground lamb. Or leg it could of be lamb. like leg of lamb, or I Roast. could make one on the grill. But again, only Redmond seasoning. Okay. A steak or a roast. So that means no ground beef. I, I would be completely fine with this. I don't necessarily want to roast all the time, but like steak, I'm I'm in, I'm in for it. Canned, Canned chicken. chicken. Oh, but think about this. Canned chicken with nothing to wet it. Right, just canned chicken and You can't turn it into a pizza. Keto brick. Keto so brick. So only keto brick. I feel like this one would be good. I would enjoy that We've day. done keto brick in the past. We did, like doing it for multiple days, like do I want it to land on keto brick for all each five days? No, but because it's hard. You, you think that it's not enough food, but like I can remember, remember I was like, oh, I can't eat another piece of keto brick because it's just, it's so much fat. Yeah. Uh, chicken legs and oh, thighs. Oh, I'm not looking forward to that. Chicken legs and thighs only. We're going to have to pressure cook some of that because like, oh. The only way to eat chicken legs is like air fry barbecue. Oh. Put but in you a don't, bunch of seasoning. No sauce. Yeah, but you put seasoning on it. Like you can make a nice chicken bake with like the Redmond's organic garlic pepper. This is not my favorite cut of chicken. Okay. That's all, that's everything on here. So let's clarify a couple more things before we spin for tomorrow. Okay. Do we want to spin each day? Do we want to spin like the everything night now? night before. So, yeah. So, we're not going to spin them all now. We're going to do four tomorrow. Okay. So, I want to add a couple rules in. All right. You can't get each ingredient you can only get once. So, if we get... if we, let's say Sardines. We, so, let's say we pull sardines. You can't. Sardines is off the table for the rest of the week. You okay. can only get it one time. So, if that one comes up again, we re-spin. Okay. Okay, so like an, throughout I, the whole like week, like a creamy, you you can only get it one time. Okay. Okay. Um, we've already said the fat source is animal fats only, and just enough to cook and maybe add a little bit of flavor. But you can't decide like I don't like chicken thighs, so I'm just gonna eat a stick of butter for the day. You can't do that. You have to honor the day. Okay. Right. So flavor and cooking. That's it, and only Redmond seasonings. I hope it's good. Okay, I, and I'm this one nervous. is going to really hurt me. You must eat at least one meal of that item. You can't... Fast. You can't pull chicken legs and go, I'm fasting today. Right. You can't do that. Okay. You have to eat at least... One meal. One complete meal. So you have to at least have, like, what we would make for a keto chow. Or do you want to do, like, with the canned products, like chickens, that like, you have to eat the whole can? You have to eat the whole, you have to at least eat one can. So yeah. one healthy serving. You don't have to do all three meals. If you get you sardines, have to, you have to eat an entire can I of sardines. I have to eat an entire least. can, at least, of sardines. This is one, this is that moment where it sounded really good in the planning stage, but now it's here. We've said that we can only have... Shake on this. Well, we're not quite done yet. You may not want to shake yet. Wait, what? Okay, there, there is... I think, are we going to allow electrolytes or like, should we do keto chow only electrolytes? Like no sweeteners. Let's do keto chow electrolytes. So no sweeteners. And I get at least one, I get my morning coffee with keto brains in it. One, one, one coffee experience. Even Dr. Barry allows me one coffee experience. Yeah, but you, I was going to say you can have as much coffee as you want, but you have butter as your, butter as, you want keto brains. I want one Keto Brains. That's my morning coffee. It's the first coffee of the day. We don't mess with the first coffee of the day. The rest of the day, I will honor it. But that's my one addendum. But Keto Brains is not an animal fat source. No, it's not. And it has a sweetener in it. I'm telling you, I do you want this challenge or do you not want this challenge? Okay, then I get one Celsius. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. So, you, so we're going to do... You can have a Celsius. Okay. Or you can have one coffee... That has keto brains. That in. has keto brains. And then if you want coffee throughout the day. Black coffee. It, or, you, or you can put a tablespoon of butter. There, okay, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Deal. Does this mean that like, this is a pure challenge? No, but it's our challenge. It's fun. We're making up the rules for this. Right. This is, I mean, clearly, like if you have a wheel, if you have a wheel, a wheel of, of misfortune, misfortune, then like you, you are already on the outskirts of what everybody else is doing, right? Like this is, I know we're strange. I get it. Now, wait. 
We also are gonna volley back and forth spinning this wheel. You don't get control of this wheel. Why? Because, so you're holding it, but like don't influence it. <laughs> don't influence it. You have to give it an authentic spin, like a Can price I... is right spin. Like that? No. <laughs> no, you can't. You have to, it has to go all the way around So I go first? So it's gotta go all the way around. I, well, I can fix that. You ready? Do a practice spin. So if this was it, we would be eating keto brick every day. Oh, that one doesn't count? But that one doesn't count. We just wanted to, I just wanted to see that you could actually spin the wheel. So Are you, you ready? ready? Okay. All right, hold on. I have to get it mentally prepared. All right. Okay. Now we're going to be really upset if it's something gross and like it could have been keto brick. But like we can't count that one because I said it was a practice spin. Are All right. Ready? So this is, this is for the whole deal. So this is for tomorrow. What we're eating is... It's gonna be so oh! <laughs> Day one? Day one is sardines. Sardines. I knew, I told you, I really called it that like it could have been keto brick and it's not at sardines because we did it. A re-spin. Okay, so for day one, it only is sardines. Only sardines. We'll start tomorrow. So obviously, I do not keep sardines in the house because personally, I don't like sardines. And Rachel has only recently discovered they're like, okay. So we had to run up to Costco to get sardines because somehow I spin the wheel and I get sardines. I am so sorry. And You're over there laughing. I cannot stop smiling because at least you're favored with the fact that it's on sale this week. So at least you're oh, not- that makes me feel so good. You're not paying like the full MSRP for these sardines. So we're up here at Costco and I am glad at least they have the uh, wild planet because you do want to eat like wild caught fish and not just sardines, any kind of fish you're going to eat, seafood. You really want to eat wild caught. Uh, it's better for you. It's better for the environment. The water ones are, are not on sale. So we're getting the ones on sale, which happen to have olive oil. Well, honestly, I want you to eat the olive oil ones because you need the fat source. Y yes, we said animal fat, but sardines, it's whatever it comes in. Um, so these are on sale for $6.99. There's six cans in a box. It's a little over a dollar a serving. So According to this, a serving size is 170 calories, six servings per container. So is there like one serving is one can? Well, we're doing, you have to eat a minimum of a can. And if you open the can, you have to eat the whole can. Yeah. I'm going to probably eat one can and then not eat the rest of the day. I don't know. It depends on how hungry I am. Um, probably want to eat today, but that's aside the point. Okay. So what I'm going to get, you think two boxes is enough? I think so. Like how many, there's six cans inside. Yeah. So that are would you going to eat 11 cans? I think that honestly, you should probably get a third one because they wow. are on sale. I do like them. Your granddaughter likes them. Okay. We'll get three cans or three, three boxes. boxes. So as we were going down the aisle, we came across these. These are seasoned sardines. These are also certified wild caught and sustainable. Um, but these are not on sale. So these are six cans again but this is eleven dollars because they're not on sale but these are skinless and boneless which ones should we get i, I think we should stick with the other kind because that's what everybody likes i vote for the skinless boneless but these are four dollars more like is is the, is the Cheapskate person really saying you're okay to spend four dollars more? I say we spend four dollars more. Which ones do you guys eat? Let us know down in the comment section. I guess we're gonna get these because if I have to eat them, I already don't want to eat them, but at least I won't have to deal with like skins and bones and all that stuff. So in anticipation of drawing bacon one of the days, uh, we ran up here to Fresh Market because they currently have bacon on sale. Buy one pound, get one pound free. So I go to the girl, I want 20 pounds of bacon. And she gives me a look like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I, I want 20 pounds. But you don't have to weigh it out. Just like, you know, throw a whole bunch on, whatever it is it is. So she goes, how about I give you a whole box? So we're buying a case of bacon. This is 15 pounds of bacon. Now, if we don't draw bacon, I'm not going to complain because bacon so it is day one of this five day only one ingredient food per day challenge and of course today is sardines not super happy about this um i even added in the rule that you have to eat at least one can of it so 
Don't know when I'm going to eat that. Definitely going to be doing like an OMAD. I'm just going to kind of choke it down. And it's not a knock against sardines. I just don't like them. But I don't like most fish. My plan is maybe even like stick them in the air fryer or put them in a pan with some butter and, and get up some butter. I don't know. Because uh, I also am not a huge fan of olive oil unless it's just a little bit as a dressing. Uh, but anyway, I'm going diving today. Uh, I actually thought about bringing a can and trying to choke it down. Uh, on the boat when everybody else is eating all their snacks, but I have a feeling that uh, that probably wouldn't have gone over too well. You know, I don't want people to get seasick from the smell of it. So anyway, I'm gonna go diving and I'll check in later. Well, hello, good morning, not good morning, good afternoon. It's actually two o'clock and I have yet to eat. It's not that I have been avoiding today's ingredients, sardines. It's just that I had a bunch of work to do and time just kind of got away from me. Um, I did not miss my morning coffee. As promised, I only had one amazing, magical coffee experience. So at 5 a.m., I had my normal coffee with keto brains, but that's it. I had one more coffee that was just black coffee, and I've been drinking water because apparently if I can't have a bunch of like fun coffee experiences, I just want water. So maybe that'll preach. Maybe I need to think about just having some more water. Um, I did have a little bit of water with some keto chow electrolyte drops. Um, we promised that we weren't gonna do any like Redmond Relight that had flavoring to it or LMNT. So I've been a good girl. I haven't drank any of those things, but now it is time to have some sardines. And I think the key to my sardine embracing experience today is gonna be getting the seasoning right. So we are allowed to have any type of Redmond seasoning with the exception of barbecue because it's got like a sweetener in it. So uh, I'm gonna try the smoked. I'm gonna try a little bit with the garlic pepper. I'm gonna try some with the Wasatch steak. I'm gonna try some with the organic seasoning salt. I'm even gonna try some with taco seasoning, um, chili lime, and I'm gonna try the lemon pepper because I think I need to figure out what seasoning do I like the best with this. Now, I'm gonna try pan frying some in butter. I'm gonna try putting some into my air fryer, which I did completely line because Caleb has to do all of the kitchen cleanup in the evening and I don't want to totally destroy his night by having like a bunch of smelly sardines to have to deal with. I am using gloves because I'm also going to try to just break some up like tuna fish and just mix it with seasoning and see how I like that. Um, as you know, my very first interaction with sardines was on our live stream not that long ago. So I had never before eaten sardines. I just assumed that I was not going to like them because they smelled very fishy. But I like tuna fish and I actually was pleasantly surprised to see how much I enjoy it. Michelle says that Peyton really enjoys sardines. So if my granddaughter can embrace sardines, I can embrace sardines. There's a lot of good health benefits to it. So let's get started cooking up some sardines and I'm gonna tell you, you know, which one I like best, which, you know, cooking method is gonna be the one that I go, you know, play on repeat later today. Okay, let me tell you, sardines are messy and I am an accident prone girl, so. Very first can I opened up, I literally splashed grease all over my pants. Like I completely covered it with like sardine fishy grease. Uh, was not a big fan of that. But after I got over the oil slick, um, I have uh, some cooking in the air fryer. I have some cooking on a pan. And this is just cold sardines minced up like tuna fish and I put the chili lime on this one. It just tastes like really good top shelf, top quality tuna fish to me. Really good, nice and moist, flaky, really, really delicious. I would like some mayonnaise on this, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm completely happy with this day. I do not think that Joe is gonna be as excited about it, but 
I'm really enjoying this. Okay, so this next batch is fried up in a frying pan with butter and the Redmond seasoning salt, the organic seasoning salt, the OG. Let's try it. Wow. That is really good. It has a nice um, kind of crunch on the outside of it. I really like um, shallow frying it in the pan with some butter. That is good. That took it like a couple of minutes is all. That is delicious. And that seasoning salt, that's where it's at. Oop, it sounds like my air fryer's ready. Okay, so next up is going to be the air fried sardines. I just put it in the air fryer um, and I coated it with the lemon pepper from Redmond. As you can see, we go through that a lot. Everybody in the whole house absolutely loves the lemon pepper. So, see how this one comes out. Oh wow, lemon pepper, yo. Lemon pepper is where it's at. Obviously, it is not as greasy as the one that's pan fried really feels like more of like a blackened um, style of fish. But boy, would I love to put this on top of a salad right now. Like this would be absolutely delicious. I feel like if you serve me this at, a, at a, a fancy restaurant, I'd be like, ooh, this is so amazing. So definitely something that I'm gonna put on salad. I meant to say that uh, the pan fried one, I would have loved to have with some tartar sauce absolutely but no sauces today and i'm enjoying what i have it smells in this house you are home just in time this oh. is this is actually 10 5 and 6 this is my i had 6 of these 6 tins of sardines although it's like a very messy process and like i had to change clothes because it, the grease of the sardines is everywhere. Sorry about that. Um, but I think I've landed on the style that I like the best, which is pan fried with a little bit of butter in the chili lime Redmond seasoning. Good. Okay, so give it a try. I think you'll actually like this one, only when you get your cans, you have to give me one fillet out of your cans because you're, <laughs> you're eating one of mine. Because my plan was one can because I said I only have to eat one can or we actually said that we have to eat a minimum of one can. So for me, the minimum is where we're going to go. Your nose is stopped up. My nose is stopped up. I'm actually kind of happy about that, but the smell is breaking through. But it was funny on my second dive. Don't sling that around because it's not as like durable as you think. Oh, okay. Take but a bite. On my second dive, uh, my nose started running and it was kind of funny. I'm just like diving along. I would take my mask off, swim with no mask, blow my nose. Ew. But not blow it in, just, just kind of like hold and blow and let it go everywhere. Put my mask back on. You're so grody. Hey, it's like I'm just washing my face as I'm going. Okay. Yeah, I can't. Why are you trying to smell it? You just said. Not bad. It's fishy. It's not, it's not like tuna, though. It's not as finishy as tuna. No. Now, if I put that inside of an egg life wrap with some lettuce and some tomato and a little bit of like maybe some onion and, and like keto friendly tartar sauce. Like, I could see you eating that as, like, a fish taco. None of which we can have today. It's not horrible. Um, the seasoning helps. The seasoning helps. The fish, the fish taste still comes through, but I can taste the butter, so that's really helping. I can definitely taste the Redmond chili lime. And I like the crunch. One of my things with sardines is texture. I mean, texture is a huge thing for me. That's why um, I never even really liked guacamole. Like people are like, what do you mean you don't like guacamole? It's a texture thing. Sardines is a texture thing for me. I mean, heck, I like oysters, but like you have to just swallow them. Don't try to chew them because like it's just basically eating snot. So how do you think you're going to fix your one um i may tin. do this I, I actually said in a video earlier that my plan was probably to like put them in an air fryer or, or pan fry them in butter because i feel like we did say we could use butter and butter tastes amazing 
And I think the taste of butter and salt can hide a lot. And I think you've proven it here. Good job. It really smells in here. <laughs> it's even attracting the flies, but don't worry, I keep killing them. So I even gave you a little turtle plate and my seventh tin is in the air fryer Isn't right that now. that skin? I it thought is, these are skinless. It is a little bit of skin, but that's okay. I gave you um, the pretty plate so you wouldn't notice the skin. We need something else. I was pleasantly surprised at how much I actually enjoyed it. And when you take the time to, to cook it up, I think it's, it's I really good. I couldn't do it out of the can. Yeah, out of the can, it just tastes like tuna fish, which is just not your thing. But like cooked up, not bad if you can get a good crunch. Now imagine if you it's have- It's fishy, I just don't like fish. Imagine if you have the added benefit of something like Parmesan or you know just some other things to add to it i think would make a big difference and again this is a fish that i'm going to start using regularly for fish tacos because this is quick this is right. a quick thing to make it's really not that expensive it's it's sardines are really good for you, you should probably just get the ones with the skin on it because there's actually even more nutrition absolutely stuff in that one. yeah and now that i know i'm like not totally afraid of it it doesn't have a head on it doesn't have guts inside of it like then I, then i'm really good so just seltzer water the good news is sardines are off the list you've actually already fulfilled that requirement and tomorrow when we eat you get a whole new protein it's a whole new day for one ingredient aren't you glad it wasn't five days of the same ingredient can you imagine that oh no do you want to do the practice one today to be no. like, if Joe was spinning it, what it would be? No. Okay, so I'm actually going to move it back to sardines, which is crossed out. Well, you're just spinning it. And then I got to give it a good spin. You ready? All right, make a wish. It landed on steak and roast! Steak and roast! So that's a practice run now. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm just you... kidding. Oh, okay, because I was like, um, I think you should probably stick on that one. So you got through today, super proud of you. I was pleasantly surprised to find that I like it. And tomorrow, it's steak and roast. And you're not allowed to have anything else except for steak and roast. So it is about one o'clock and this beautiful roast is in the oven. Um, we gonna have steaks today. I'm so stinking excited about it. I'm just waiting for Joe to come home from cutting grass with Anthony. And I'm gonna tell you it's getting hard because it smells so good in this house and I am ready to put some of this in my mouth. What? Today is a great day. It is not sardine day. It is steak day, roast day, and you basically made a, a, a steak roast. Is it sad to say that I'm not as excited about this one as you are? Why? So I love prime rib, but I like having horseradish with my prime rib. I do too. And I can't have horseradish, but I am going to really, really enjoy today. Uh, but so here's what we have. We have a rib roast. So a while back, our Publix had a ridiculous deal on rib roast. It was like four something, five something a pound. We even made a video. We bought like 150 pounds of rib roast. I'll leave a link for that video up here and like what to do with 150 pounds what do you of do rib with roast. It? And we did a lot of things. Like we made carnivore chips with them, uh, some of my cut into steaks. And then four or five of them, because we even bought more than 150 pounds of them, four or five of them I smoked. But I smoked them for like three or four hours, and then we vacuum sealed them in our JVR Vac 100 chamber vacuum and froze them. So whenever we wanted to have a prime rib roast, which I would like we all could the time. have. Now, yeah. technically, it's not prime rib because it's not a prime cut of meat, but it's the same thing. It's a rib roast, it's delicious. And so what I did was when we spun it yesterday, I immediately went and grabbed one. I'm like, what are we gonna do? Roast, okay, ribs, you know, or roast or steak. So I'm like, oh, well we have these. I wanna create room in our freezer anyway. I wanna this create room too. Takes a lot of room up. Mm -hmm. So I pulled it out and I've stuck it in our Nova Precision oven in sous vide mode for 125 degrees. And it has been sous vide 
for almost 24 hours. Yeah. Like 22 hours or something like that. I am so happy right now. Like that was a great decision. Well, the better thing about sous vide this is the smell of this smoked prime rib. The whole house. Is overcoming the smell of the sardines. Yes, thankfully. So here is a little piece of advice. Cook it outside. Do not... <laughs> Under any circumstance, cook sardines in your house. Yes, we've learned. And especially do not cook them in your air fryer ever, inside or outside. Shallow. Because I think at this point we need a new air fryer. Shallow pan fry them outside, outside. on like your single burner. For someone who doesn't like sardines, it didn't taste horrible. No, it didn't. But do you ever have like that lingering smell of bacon, which isn't a horrible smell? Well... Sardines. A lingering smell of sardines they ain't is gonna, not the greatest. They ain't going to turn that into a Yankee candle. So I did want to say that today, uh, this is not my first meal. I did have an entire bag, almost an entire bag. Anthony started eating them of our carnivore chips. This was a end roast, if I remember right. So it's a little bit leaner, but uh, we were cutting grass at the church and I brought a package with me. This package weighs three and a half ounces. They all do. So that's equivalent of about nine or 10 ounces of beef. So all the protein that you would find in nine ounces of, of like an end roast. So close to eating these. Uh, what? So close. Like, well, um, you could have had that. Well, I should have. Well, but... not this. That's technically not a roast. Oh, okay. But I kept thinking to myself, I like, guess it is. anytime Joe's coming in. So just wait, just wait. But I was getting hungry. And this smell is all yeah. throughout the house. So you came home just in time. So when I smoked this, I didn't even take off uh, the ribs. So look at that. That's so beautiful. And you can see, look at the inside and of that. And you love the ribs too. So this has been cooking for 24 hours. And it is I'm going at to a perfect like rare medium rare it's about 128 degrees inside of it yesterday i got all the sardine water on me so today i'm like i'm not having beef juice on my jeans we're not doing that every single day of this challenge are we willing to share this with the kids or no look at that oh my gosh that looks so good Okay. I'm ready. Are you ready? Lop it down on a plate. The cool thing about having a prime rib and if you have a sous vide, generally when you get prime rib, you can't reheat a prime rib. Like, Pardon me. Cook a prime rib, eat the whole thing in a sitting, give it to everybody, but you can't, pre you can't reheat it because it won't be that temperature anymore. You're going to mm. overcook it. Oh my gosh, that fat though. But if you have a sous vide, oh. you can reheat prime rib mm. in a sous vide. Just set it for like 125 degrees. It's going to warm it up, but you're not going to overcook it. Let me so try it's still going to be nice and moist. A Sorry. little bit of the uh, beef butter. Mm. I'm going to have some of this butter right here. Wow. Wow. Okay. This ain't no sardine. It. I know that much. Let's see. Mm. The fat. Mm -hmm. All day long. All day long. What you doing? Well, I enjoyed my piece and believe it or not, I still want a little bit more. So um, I ate some beef brisket because it was like crunchy and I wanted like some crunchy texture. And now I am just going to cut off another piece of this before I finish up for the day. Look at that. It's just perfect, super tender. Delicious. Well, how did beef day go compared to uh, sardines day? Beef day was much better. I think beef day was better too. I was, I'm not surprised by that, but it was delicious. I wound up though, feeling full and satisfied on sardines day, went back a second time for beef day though. I feel like I ate a lot more on beef day. I think it's just cause you like beef. I like beef. And you don't like sardines that much. As much as beef. And the winner is bacon and pork belly. 
Wow, bacon and bacon. pork belly. It's just bacon. You you think you're just gonna do bacon? I, I'm and just pretty sure it's just gonna be. It's bacon. just gonna be a bacon kind of day. But you know, we do bacon. Interesting. We like bacon crumbles. We like bacon in just jerky. Bacon. I like bacon jerky though. Yeah, but I like the bacon jerky where I put like uh, teriyaki and that's so gonna be a no no. So, it, that's so gonna you be can no do, So you can do the bacon jerky, but it's just, already made. Just, yeah, I have some plain ones made, but we can't have the teriyaki ones. Well, if we can't have the teriyaki ones, then I'm gonna go with let's cook up a mess of bacon. Because I just had a feeling we were gonna land on bacon. You bought a case of bacon. We did buy 15 pounds of bacon. This is gonna be a great day. It's <laughs> bacon day. I actually woke you up saying like, it's bacon day, Joe. I know. Good morning. When it's, she was going to bed last night. It's not Christmas morning, Joe. It's bacon morning. So we've got a bunch of bacon. So yes. all that bacon that I bought the other day. We're gonna eat it. I vacuum sealed it into one pound packs. So. I've got a bunch of it. I don't know how much bacon we're gonna eat. No, um, I have high hopes. I've already cooked up a pound twisty bacon. I love twisty bacon. So again, Twist now I it. did not create twisty bacon. No. But I'd never heard about it until Chris Bear told me about it. Yeah. And it's like, people are like, how do you cook a lot of bacon at once? You twist it up and put it, cause then you can add more to the pan. So I got an entire pound, more than a pound oh. of bacon there. I got four pounds here. I'm also gonna go make some more bacon jerky. Yes. Which is what these are. I love bacon jerky. And we're just gonna eat bacon. So what is bacon jerky? Bacon jerky is slow cooked jerky. So I have a, I'll, if we didn't leave a link, I don't know if we already said we would, but I'll put one up here if not. Otherwise the link is down below. But basically what we do is we have a video on it and you cook it in your dehydrator at like I love 158 it. 158 degrees, 159 degrees for yes. four or five hours. And it gives you like a jerky texture. Are you ready to eat? Yes, I see some other bacon over there. Oh, I was gonna hoping you were gonna try to grab that first and then I was gonna say, no. I want to try this. Well, you can't have it because we're gonna eat this first. And the dog, the dog bacon. It, there's, so there's bacon. We're gonna eat go carnivore dog. This is a dog treat. But it says it's a human grade treat. So why not eat it? So yeah. this is really meant for Tabitha. Which we're gonna give her some. Her tail's wagging. I know. Stop using your teeth. What's wrong with you? Because I broke it. I don't know, now I gotta go get a pair go of scissors. Go get a pair of scissors. You gotta preserve this Ziploc top. I did. Okay. Ooh. It smell like bacon? What's in it? Oh, wait, is it only bacon? Um, salted bacon. Yeah. Sliced bacon, cured with water, salt, sugar. Yeah, so it's bacon. It's bacon. Refrigerated after opening. It looks like our bacon jerky. It does look like our bacon jerky. We're gonna eat a dog treat. Yeah, it smells like bacon. Oh, yours is like fattier than mine, I think. Okay, I'll treat you. All right, you ready? Wait, should we make, let's open up one of these. Okay, so this is the one we make. Okay. This is the one from them. Okay, so get one of yours, because I'm not sharing this. Oh, okay. Ready? But, and again, ours is cold, so it, it's, yeah. it's cold. So yeah. as it warms up to room temperature, it's gonna get more like this. I like, kinda like them cold. Which one do we wanna go first? Start with the dog treat. Dog treat. Dog treat. Dink. Dink. I'm not giving that to Tabitha. That is basically just. Why would we give that to Tabitha? Now taste yours. Dink. See, I like it cold. Like I want to put those in the refrigerator. Mm. I like. I mean, I like Joe's. So yeah, it's bacon. Tabitha, come here, baby. Come, come here. Come talk to everybody. Come up here. Come on. Come on. Are you is good? it Tabitha approved? I think it's Tabitha it's approved. It's Tabitha approved. Okay, so I got my bib. I'm ready to devour the rest of this bacon. You're gonna need to get a plate because otherwise this is my serving. That's my serving. No, we gotta divide this. This is too good of a day. We're gonna have to be protective of our marriage by like dividing up the bacon equally. There's two pieces of bacon jerky. I'm gonna start with this. How's that? Mm. This is so much better than sardines. But it needs to be crispy, because I'm telling you, 
If this was snotty bacon, I would not be looking forward to it. Mm. Crispy bacon. How do you like your bacon down below? Do you like crispy? Do you like snotty? Do you like it in the middle? Or do you like bacon jerky? Like, I've really grown to I've love really bacon jerky. I've really started enjoying bacon jerky. What you doing? Making more bacon jerky. So as you're making this bacon jerky, are you putting some like sauce on it? Like teriyaki sauce or something? You can't have sauce, honey. We said um, you can only have bacon. Like no sauces, no dipping. Bacon and animal fats, remember? Yeah. But we did say you could have Redmond seasoning. So I was thinking about coating like half of it in the Redmond chili lime. I think that's a great idea. Now that I've got it laid out, I'm just gonna take this chili lime and I'm gonna be super, in fact, I'm gonna put it on the big hole. I'm gonna be like super generous with this chili lime and we're gonna really give it a good coating. And one thing you might notice, I'm doing it stacked on top because this way, look at that. As it misses, it's dropping down to the one below. So by doing it this way, it does two things. Some of the ones below already have more seasoning on it and it makes cleanup a little bit easier because it's not getting all over the counter. So I feel like I'm not wasting as much because it's like, you see how like when I lift up this next one, you'll see how there's already some seasoning on there. So look at that. See, there's a little bit of seasoning on here, a little bit of seasoning on there. So we're gonna do three that are heavily seasoned and then we've got these three that barely have anything on it. Boy, you can't even wait. What are you worried that you won't have enough footage of me eating bacon? <laughs> Cause you'll have plenty of footage of it. We're running out of room here. Mm. Okay. So. You got a little bit of bacon to eat. We got a little bit of bacon. So this is some more curly bacon. I love this. Cooked in the oven. Twisty bacon. And then this is the bacon jerky. There's something magical about it fresh. So yeah, there's a lot of grease on it. My favorite. Normally what I do with bacon jerky is after I make it, I lay it all out on paper towels and I put it in the refrigerator overnight. Mm. Okay, and the reason I put it in the refrigerator overnight, so the, the paper towels will pick up a little bit of this excess grease. Then the reason I put it in the fridge is because when I go to vacuum seal it, it's already cold and they don't stick together. If you vacuum seal it when it's all right, when it's warm and all that grease is left, two things happen. First of all, the grease gets all over the outside of the bag, where you're sealing it and everything else. It's a messy job. Second, when you then go put it into the refrigerator, all the pieces stick together because of the fat. But if you already have it cold, that doesn't seem to happen. As you saw this morning, you take it out and you can pull them apart. Nice. One of the reasons I like bacon jerky, so here's a slice of bacon. And here's a slice of bacon. So wow. if you're looking for volume, you get the jerky. Now it's not as crispy because it's more of a jerky consistency. Right. But you get more food and actually, I think you technically get more fat. Like I like having this kind of, this much bacon. I mean, like you said, it's the same. These are the same. Mm -hmm. But like, which one would you have? I would rather have a longer bacon experience. Yeah. So. We're gonna keep eating bacon. Mm, we have to spin the wheel though. We're each about a about a pound and a half in or so by now. Yeah, each. Eas easily. Um, okay, so I marked off bacon. Sadly, we cannot spin bacon again. That makes me a little bit sad. We'll let you know tomorrow morning what, um, eh. how much bacon we ate. Yeah, but let me move it to bacon because it's my turn to spin, right? You spin bacon. There's nobody that can spin better than that. The winner is chicken wings. Oh, chicken yeah. wings tomorrow. Now I that that did not stink. That was not I'm a stinky move. I'm I'm definitely good with that. Now it's a little we don't we have the Redmond seasoning and we have butter. Yeah. How are you going to do it without no hot sauce, friend? Butter and Redmond seasoning sounds pretty good to I, me. I think it sounds good to me also. I'm just going to do it as a dry rub. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm eating bacon until I get authentically full. <laughs> really? Are you enjoying this day? This is a great day 
take time to savor the good stuff because some days are going to throw you sardines and some days are going to throw you bacon. So I don't want to waste my bacon days thinking about like, what, what if there's another sardine day heading around the corner? No, enjoy the bacon day. Here's my thing. So many times we get emails. I see comments, people in our own personal lives. I can't do that because like I'm going to miss X, whether it be sugar, bread, pasta, fruit. My thing is don't focus on what you're not having. Focus on what you are having. And for us, a lot of bacon. Today it's a lot of bacon. I think I'm done. Really? I can't believe it. I mean, I ate a lot this morning. Probably, I would say. You think you were closer to two pounds this morning? I think I ate close to two pounds this morning. But it, it, this way with all that fat, that's what's slowing me down. Because you can see I'm not grabbing for the cooked twisty bacon. I'm surprised. I'm grabbing for these. And more specifically, the ones that are seasoned with the chili lime. So as, you, as we just discussed, very fatty. They're super, super fatty. It's slowing me down. Even I can't out eat fat. <laughs> it's chicken wings day. So we have a lot of wings here. It's so buttery. Yeah, so what I did was I cooked all of the wings up and then I melted two sticks of butter. I know it's a lot of butter, but when you go buy like hot sauce or mild sauce wings, what they're doing is they're mixing butter with Frank's Red Hot. Mm -hmm. And the milder that you get, the more butter that's in there. So right. if you're looking for something, so long as they're actually using butter and not canola oil, which most places use like a canola oil or a soybean oil, the best thing to actually get is usually medium mm -hmm. because those are going to have like the fat, less of the fat added in right and again a lot of times that fat source is like a, a seed oil if you're using real butter ha have, have at it with it. the mild so i melted two sticks of butter i tossed all these in there and then i put these in here and you can see like all the butter sitting down there and then these are all seasoned with the chili lime but we have also have these other ones so we want more later on if we want more when we're done with this just take them take these transfer to a bowl Throw some seasoning in there, give it a little toss, and you've got them. But so these are all unseasoned, just butter. So we have the seasoned salt we can use. We have the chili lime, obviously, wasatch. the taco, the wasatch. We have the lemon pepper, and then we also have the garlic pepper. So uh, we did, I don't know if we did say how much bacon we yeah. ate the other day, but at the end of the day, um, the way I figured it out to be somewhere between the two of us, we went through like six and a half pounds of bacon. I think that I probably ate three and a half pounds and maybe you ate three, but like, I, I know I definitely ate more than you, but I, it's probably in that three. Pounds. I will say this. My inflammation has gone way down. Like I can feel it. My face isn't as inflamed. I just feel it. And again, we ate a lot of bacon. We ate a lot of bacon. Uh, we'll let you let know later on how many wings we actually eat. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. I am disappointed. Are you disappointed? I want to eat wings. Well, eat it some just, wings. I'm, I'm stuffed. I'm at 15 and a half. I've eaten like 30. <laughs> you may even be more. I, I mean... I, I don't know why I can't eat anymore. I'm I'm thinking that the seasoning is what I need because when we do like the sauces, like mm. the G Hughes sauces, I feel like I don't have a shot off valve. Wow, that's interesting. But with the seasonings, I I definitely have a shut off valve. I think that I am um the opposite because we tend to try to get more like sauces with a kick to them. Uh -huh. And I think what is stopping me from eating more is the, um, the heat level. So if the heat level of my, by the time my entire mouth, I'm no longer tasting chicken. I'm just taking, tasting sauce. I'm kind of like, all right, I'm done. So it's funny that the thing that is the problem for you and the thing that's the problem for me is like com completely the opposite. Like I feel like all systems go today. Really? 
Yeah. But then I was also very hungry. I think what we're going to do is just go ahead and spin the wheel now because I'll probably eat some more wings later, but I don't know. And honestly, like, I'm tired. Like, I you don't... You look like you need a nap. I've been out in the sun all day and, like, yeah. I've got a lot going on in the next couple of weeks. So we're going to spin for the next one. It's my turn to spin. It is your turn to spin. Don't worry. Gosh, he needs a nap. Um, um <laughs> But, like, this is the... T tomorrow is the last day of this challenge. We've done sardines we did me. a steak and roast yep we did bacon yep here is chicken wings and this is it this is for 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 all the money wheel of misfortune what are you hoping for keto chow keto chow it would be nice to end the five days on a dessert oh that'd be nice that would be good or keto brick that's like very tasty also i don't want salmon and i don't want shrimp i want salmon or shrimp i want either of those Ready? Yes. <laughs> what is it? Bread and butter. Oh my gosh, I forgot that was on there. So did I. That means I have to make a bunch of loaves. You um, got to now make. Now, where bread and butter is? If you forgot from the beginning, is we're going to make indigo neelys butter bread mm -hmm. without the arrowroot. Are you ready for this day? The last day. And we're ending it, when I wanna, when I think of things ending with a bang, it's not PSMF bread and butter day. Right. Right, like, I, I don't know. I, If we had ended on chicken wings, if we had ended on bacon, I'd be like, dun, dun, dun. But this, I'm not sure how I feel about ending on this. What about you? It's, the bread is a conveyance for butter for me. Yeah. That that's the, the bread is a conveyance for butter. If this was the original PSMF bread, like before Neely changed things with it, I would definitely not look forward to this day. But the butter bread recipe definitely is a change. I will leave a link for Neely's recipe uh, up here. Now, I didn't even realize because we do not make it that often because, as I said, the bread becomes a conveyance for butter and a drive-by for us. So if we have it, we will consume the entire loaf in a day. And I'm going to show you why that's not a good thing in a minute. Everyone thinks, oh, it's nothing. No, it's something. And it I'm is something. But it's funny that, like, we have permission today right. to just eat the loaf of bread and butter. Just but eat as much bread as you want. What we were doing is consuming a loaf between the two of us, sometimes more than one, and a stick of butter. On top of our food. On top of our food. It was just a drive-by. But I didn't realize. So I was all prepped and I, I took butter that was frozen and I grated the butter and I put it back in the freezer and it's sitting in the freezer. And then I pulled up Neely's written recipe and see she's modified it to use butter powder instead of butter. Oh, okay, cool. So now... I do want people to know powdered fats add carbs. In this case, not a, a lot, okay. but they do add carbs. Like the powdered butter adds about three carbs to the total recipe. I'm gonna go over that in a minute. Whereas the regular butter doesn't add any carbs that you're using frozen butter. However, and I, I've never made it this way, so I don't even know if it mixes as well. However, it's easier. Butter powder like is easier than easy. grating frozen butter. The only thing is, is one of the things I liked about using the frozen butter is the fact that you would get these little chunks. Remember, like it would be like swirls of butter and you're not going to get that with butter powder. I don't hate that. Okay, so we've made three loaves. Okay, they look a little different in size. Well, yeah. I made a big loaf and then I also made four of these smaller ones. So each, this is a full recipe, this is a full recipe, and then there's two more of this size over there. This didn't sink. I squeezed it to get it out, but they're they're the same. Okay. A serving is roughly 400 grams of completed bread. Like I've weighed it all out. So 200, 200, like with give or take like four or five grams. Not okay. gonna worry about that. So each one of these are like, one's 195. I just kind of eyeballed it. One's 195, one's like 203. So I figured out macros. My goal for the day is to eat it, one and a half loaves and a stick of butter, but I have a feeling I'm going to go over in butter. Okay. I don't know about you. Do you think Do you think one stick of butter is enough for one and a half loaves? I, I mean, I think it depends on how you eat it. Like, because this is my meal, 
I think what I'm going to do is I might cut this in half and eat it like oh my God. garlic bread. Yeah, but you can't put garlic. Oh, I guess you can I put I can put the you, seasoning. You can put on red it. I didn't even think about. It. We could put Redmond's organic garlic pepper on it or make it into a toast. I didn't think about that. High five. I like that idea. If you need more ideas for you for eating butter, I'm your girl. Do you want to know the nutrition if we eat one and a half loaves and a, and a stick of butter? Okay. Okay. So this is half, is this half a loaf? That's a half a loaf. Okay, so if I eat this. So okay. basically, that's all yours. This? All, all this of that. Is that's mine. one and a half servings. One full recipe, so this is a full recipe, is 586 calories. Hmm. Based on Neely's recipe, and oh, by the way, I modified her recipe, no arrowroot powder, because that does bring carbs, and I find it's fine without it. Okay. And I took the allulose from one quarter of a cup to one tablespoon. So you've reduced that By also. a third. Okay. By a third. Here's me. I eat this 500 plus calories one slice at a time. Right. One very, like, this ain't doing nothing slice at a time so like i can quickly go from hey it's 50 calories a slice to i just ate 500 calories like it right. just happens yep okay you ready mm -hmm. so one serving or one full recipe so that both of these or this 586 calories that's not nothing only 19 grams of fat because okay. again you're only putting the butter powder and we used egg yolks and uh, egg yolk powder instead of whole eggs because i can't find my whole but egg powder. but you're going to add butter to this you're going to put something on it right 87 grams of protein in mm. one serving wow. so not bad but here's the thing 22 total carbohydrates well wow. now 12 of that is allulose and again remember i cut the allulose by a third to a third or to, by a third? Uh, to a third of it okay so, so two thirds off so if you were using the recipe as she did without the arrowroot powder, I don't know how much the arrowroot powder adds, that would be another 24 carbs because we count total carbs. And again, if you were a normal human and eat things as Neely and Maria intended, then you aren't as concerned as somebody who acts like we do, which is eat is a lot right right now if you are curious where are those carbohydrates coming from three grams come from cream of tartar which you need for the egg white powder five grams come from the egg white powder because there's carbs in eggs yeah okay two come from the butter powder okay and then like i said 12 from the allulose so it's not nothing. now do i worry about carbs in egg whites no no but it's something to be aware of. If you were eating a whole loaf, you were eating 600 calories a day and a lot of protein. If you're eating a lot of protein and not enough fat, you could possibly have an elevated glucose if yeah. you're eating a tremendous amount of protein and not enough fat. If we eat one and a half loaves, so, so one and a half recipes, if, we eat, if we eat all of that and one stick of butter. So this is- And a stick being eight tablespoons. Okay. So there's your food. That is 1,700 calories. That is 131 grams of protein, 12 grams of fat, hmm. and 14.7 net carbs. You mean 120 grams of fat. Yeah, I'm sorry, what did you I say? You said 12 grams of okay, fat. Okay, yeah, no, 120 grams of fat. So and 14.7 net carbs. And well, again, what's my that's total? 18 more carbs. I'm going it's not horrible. I'm going to do it, but this, I'm telling you right now, I'm not like, what makes bread fun is all the things you can do with it, right? Like that it goes with. So you, we're eating all of these foods, like maybe you're eating cheese or you're eating bacon, you're eating lettuce, you're eating tomato, but you're like, what would make this fun is turn it into a BLT. Give me some bread, right? right? When you take the bread out, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm like, sad because the bread is gone right. find me a way to get the bread back in right so we have this strange why don't you grab those over there reverse situation right now which is we don't get anything to put on the bread and now we're like oh i wish i had something to put on this bread look at how pretty your slice is and i've got like a honk okay Hands i'm gonna over. take one bite without it first. okay ding ding 
Mmm. It's really good. Delicious. We'll, we'll check in a little bit later. But I'm gonna say this now. We are not, we are not encouraging anybody to do a PSMF bread and butter only meal plan. If everybody has not understood that this is like a game. This do you, is a game. Do you need to only do bacon day? No. Do you need to only do sardines day? No. No, but I'm gonna say this. If you did an only beef day, if you did an only eggs day, if you did an only sardines day, you are getting a lot of nutrition out of those foods. If you only ate eggs for 30 days, you are gonna get all of the nutrients for the most part that you need, especially if you also supplement with the Keto Chow Daily Minerals. If you ate only beef for 30 days or longer, you're gonna get just about all of the vitamins and nutrients that you need, especially if you supplement with the Keto Chow Daily Minerals. If you ate only egg white bread and butter every day for 30 days, you will get the fat and protein that you need, but you're not gonna get all the nutrients because this is pretty devoid of nutrients because there's no real nutrients in egg whites. All of the nutrients are in egg yolks and this has a tablespoon of egg yolks, which is actually more than Neely's recipe even calls for. You know what I want on this right now? An egg. So I have cut off all the crust and I have lathered it with half of my stick of butter, some Redmond garlic uh, pepper seasoning, and then I still have this loaf to eat today and half of my butter. And then I just doused all of the um, crust with chili lime seasoning. I am, however, going to need something to drink. Are you ready to eat already? I'm weirdly still hungry a little bit. Um, I cannot eat the crust. So I am no longer a part of the clean plate club and thankfully so. If I don't like something, I just don't finish it anymore. That used to be something that I always did. You could always count on me to play clean up whenever there was food around. I'm really thankful I don't do that anymore. I don't want the crust. I cut it off and I put it into the toaster oven, well, the Innova oven again to toast it. And this time I hit it with butter and um, the chili lime seasoning. And it's very tasty. Ugh. okay. I mean, it's, the day's not over, but. You are a night eater. Like you. Yeah, but I'm not like eating sun, at night lately. If the sun is going, like right now it's six o'clock. I, I'm I'm done. I would, but I'm gonna tell you. I'm not finishing this. I wanted to finish it. Did you finish it all? I did not. I did not. I had like this much left, and I just I, I've absolutely those last two slices. Like I just I just threw it out. Like I'm I'm done. I'm oh. just done. Well, we could have saved it. No, it was literally like a slice. It's like oh, this. It's oh, like okay. two of these slices. Okay, by two of these slices. I didn't eat any of the crust, um, and I was just, I, but I got my butter in. I'm really thankful for the butter and the seasoning, and I actually liked it with chili lime. I know that's weird. I like it with the wasatch steak. But it's, it's nice. It's very, it's very tasty. The garlic uh, pepper was wonderful, too. This, this is probably the best one. Big shout out to Redmond's and their seasoning line. They, they actually made this entire week flavorful and exciting because we could take a single ingredient yep. and this brings so much flavor have it different every time it's this one's got a little bit of heat but i like yeah, it. it does um we have a discount code it's two crazy ketos i'll leave a link for it down below i don't have to worry when i use their seasonings i do wish that they would put this in the big containers because you like it that like much. Like, I want this. Hey, Redmond, if you're watching, I want this. And the chili, chili lime. lime. And the taco. But especially yeah. the chili lime in this, in this size. So That's good. what I really, really want because we do go through so much of it. We eat a lot of chili lime. I've been really good with my butter management. Look at this. Yeah, you've got like another half. 
That was my strategy also. I knew that I wanted each slice to be very buttery. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say though, lathering it out this way and having like a stick and being like, this is, this is my range really helped with that. Because I think that again, if you are just using this as a drive-by, and all you're doing is I'm gonna dry by for a while. He, you know, going by the butter container, I will even not even think and just change it out like, oh, there must not have been as much better there as I thought there was. Right. And just really, I'm sure that we went through more than an entire stick of butter each when we were doing drive-bys. Absolutely. I know we were. Because yeah. I know how much butter was in the container. And so I will probably finish this tonight, but that, this is um, probably moving into the, the next freezer. Week. Yeah, yeah. That, that'll go into the freezer because we have a bunch of travel coming up. I mean, I'm full. The only reason I'm even eating now is because Rachel's been making fun of me. Like, I've been working well, on the computer, and it. she was like, "Joe, you're eating less of this than you did of the sardines." Because like I hadn't even like at the time that she said that. I hadn't even started this one yet. Yeah. And you were already on your third one. I was just like, I'm full. This is the best. Okay. This is like, thank you so much to Maria, to Neely for bringing to the keto space bread that we can utilize. However, this exercise, if nothing else, got that, mm, I wish I had more bread, out of my system. You will not hear that complaint come out of me because when given the opportunity, not forced, given the opportunity to eat as much bread as I've eaten today, I'm like, good, get me something else. Something. <sighs> it is the morning after. The challenge is complete. The game is complete. What are your final thoughts, sir? My final thoughts are I couldn't finish my bread what was weird to me was because you couldn't finish your sardines either right like you had a certain amount of sardines that you thought okay this is the ballpark of what i think would be a reasonable amount to satisfy my let, life let me pause you there I, you were able to let that go but you, i was able to not eat more more of i didn't want to eat sardines right as opposed to being full but i felt like in letting go of the day and being like, okay, I didn't eat every morsel of bread. Like I, I want to tap out. I still felt mad at the situation. Is that weird? Because like when I was done with sardine day or you were done, you just walked away from me. You're like, okay, I'm not, I don't want to eat any more of those. But with the bread, we both went to bed feeling like, man, I wish we could just eat another ingredient today. We were like pity partying. Yeah. So. Yeah, with the sardines, I didn't eat more than a can of sardines because I didn't want to eat sardines. That's the bottom line. I didn't want to eat sardines. But I understood that there's nourishment so in sardines. It's not that they were filling and I couldn't eat more. I didn't want to eat more. Right. With the bread. It's like there's no nutrients in I here. I couldn't eat more. I was full. But I don't think that's a good thing. Right. So I ate all of this bread. I ate an entire recipe's worth of bread. So like, cause this is basically almost a recipe. So this is basically a half a loaf or a half a recipe. So I ate basically one full recipe. And I couldn't eat any more, but at the end of the day, I'm like, I want more even though I physically couldn't eat more because I didn't find it satisfying. Right. It just wasn't satisfying mentally because it was bread and salt and water. But And here's the thing. I don't think it's a good thing because I ate a bunch of protein and fat but no nutrients, no vitamins, no nutrients because egg whites are devoid of nutrients. They're just a protein. And I don't think that that's a good thing. This is why I'm not into calories. People like calories. Well, the second you believe in the calorie model, you have to kind of tie into a calories, a calories, a calorie, which just isn't true. And so you can say, great, you ate a bunch of calories, but I got zero nutrients out of that. If I were to eat that for 30 days, 
I want to say my hair would fall out, but I don't have it. You're already hair. there. But I would be so nutrient deficient, I would be sick. Like if you ate that for 30 days, you would lose all your hair. Well, and you'd probably really work yourself into a like an aversion to the egg whites, yeah. right? Like you would be, your, your body is like enough with that now. Like that that's where you can work yourself into kind of like an allergic reaction almost to it. So I, I, I couldn't finish it just because I was full. I mean, did it fill me up? Yes. Do but, I think the bread would be good if you were having a whole bunch of meat and then put a slice on there to kind of top it sandwich. off? Yeah, you know, I'm not against the egg white bread. It's just more of it's it's it shouldn't be a bulk of your diet. When you go to Disney World or Universal Studios or any place that sells you fast food, McDonald's, when you take that and you throw out the bread, you realize there's no food on here. Because 75% of it is the bread. Right. Well, your diet should be the other way around. 75 to 95% of it should be meat and just a little bit. So if you had a giant plate of meat and a slice of that to kind of top you off so long as you ate the meat first, I think you'd be really good. So I really enjoyed this challenge and I think that we should do it again. I already went ahead and erased the things that we ate this week because we would like your recommendations on what to eat the next time. You wanna do this again? We spin the wheel because it was fun. It made it exciting and it's probably also an opportunity to clean out your freezer because I bet there's all kinds of things and you could get specific on like cuts of we meat can oh, I just thought that of are in like maybe if you just say like, hey, all we're gonna eat is sausage and then you can get rid of your sausages. You could say, I, I mean, I know we use single ingredient things, but what if you have like some only meat breakfast sandwiches to eat, right? Right? Like you could clean up the freezer with us. I thought of a couple things, but before we do that, I want to go back to the bread. Okay. Because I, I want to say out of the five days, I, we did not do like, Hey, we're going to measure our glucose, measure our ketones. And we purposely didn't do that because we, this was just a fun thing. Right. Can we finish it? How will we feel? It wasn't a big science thing. And the last thing we wanted to do is measure our ketones, see our ketones up or down, and then have someone go, well, you shouldn't eat that. Yeah. Or, oh my gosh, their ketones went up to three. No. And so... Um, we don't want to start. I, that's we should eat that for three days. I guarantee you, if I would have checked my ketones the morning after eating the sardines, they would have been through the roof. But I got news for you: it wouldn't have been because I ate sardines. It would be because I didn't eat. Right. I ate a can of sardines and it had some fat. But this was the only thing, and I'm hesitant to say this because I don't want people to draw the wrong conclusions. But. I woke up with a bunch of inflammation today. I did too. I'm like up very, five pounds. I am up, I was up nine this morning. I know that that is just inflammation. It's inflammation. That doesn't make no sense. But every other day, like just out of curiosity, I would get on the scale to see like, okay, what's going on the next day? You would think that like maybe bacon would like send you over the moon because it's just so fatty and it's bacon. Right? I hovered around the same weight all week, down a couple, Only even. Only three pounds difference was like the most in between anything. And it was always gone by the end of the day. Which your, your weight fluctuates as much as five pounds but in a day. But that was a little crazy this morning and I feel like all nine pounds are just on top of my head. So yeah, did we gain nine pounds? Did you gain nine pounds of fat? No. no. Did you gain any fat? Probably not. It's inflammation. Now, is it the egg white bread? I don't know. We did just, well, you ate what? 45 egg whites. There I mean, you go. take out the crust. So maybe you ate 40 because you didn't eat the crust. I did not on, eat the crust. On the whole wet recipe. Way. So 40 egg whites. Can that bring inflammation? Possibly. Yeah. Um, especially considering those were not pasture-raised eggs. We used egg white powder. So it's not like they're like pasture-raised eggs. Yeah. Um, it could also have to do with, I really did no electrolytes yesterday. It could have to do with the fact that we drank so much seltzer water yesterday. Like, I think at least three other bottles, but Just we kept getting refilling. the bread down. Two, four, six, eight, 
I would say we drank at least five or six of these each of seltzer water. Yes. So that could have something to do with that. Or all of, listen, the only way for me to choke down the bread was a lot of salt. A lot well, of salt. Well, yeah, I, I agree with that. Definitely. Probably, definitely. So maybe I overdid it over there. Maybe it's there. all the extra garlic. But I will say this was the only day that I had... A bunch of inflammation. Same. And that's not saying that the bread is inherently bad. No. I'm saying it's interesting. But if I'm leaning on something for a week, it probably won't be this. Like this will would not be something that I'm like, oh, I want I like want more of this as a single ingredient. You know how we're always looking for a swap out? Like when in a recipe, what's the best way to like just easily quickly swap out? Well, as far as reactions to my body, all the other proteins. I could eat them. I think if you're Didn't like, a problem. hey, I want to get some more protein, have it with your meal. Yeah. I'm not saying it's bad. I think it's an amazing, amazing Thankful thing. Thankful for but it. But it should not be a bulk of your diet. You know, if you're going to make a, a pizza, a keto pizza, and use that as the crust, Neely's got a great recipe for it. Absolutely, because you're going to be on top of that, a whole bunch of meat, hopefully, and cheese and things like that. You know, open face sandwich, sloppy joes, chili over a piece of bread, a garlic toast with your steak. I think that's where what, it'll be really good. But would I make three meals a day where I am using two slices of this and just no. canned chicken, tomato, and lettuce with no mayonnaise on it? Like, would I use this in like a diet way to be like, those are going to be my three meals every single day? No, because that's a calorie mentality and yeah. calorie things don't work. And, and I know people get upset, but it's about nutrient density, not calories. Right. And there's no zero nutrient density in this bread. There's just, there's zero nutrient density. So it should not be a major part of what you're eating. Now, with that being said, I don't think this is the greatest thing if you want to do like, hey, I need an elimination challenge. Right. You know, the problem is if you ate that, like I said, you're going to lose a bunch of hair if you were eating mostly that. Do I think sardine? Yeah, great. Eggs? Yeah, great. Beef? Yeah, great. Salmon? Yeah. All of that has a lot of nutrient density. You know, if you look at vegetables, People think outside of keto that all your nutrients and your vitamins come from vegetables. Chris Baird did a great presentation on this during the low carb cruise. I'll leave a link for that up here. But the bottom line is there's more nutrient density in beef, salmon roe, and liver. Which that might be one we have to add I to just the wheel of misfortune. We should put that on here. <sighs> Liver. Liver. Li only liver. Okay, so I see three more spaces on our wheel left we open. Or four, rather. Four, four. Four spaces. Well, I got another one. Okay. You ready? All right. Okay. Needs to be a single ingredient. Lettuce. Wow. Lettuce because all again, day. Do we have to, like, could, use butter or could we use, like, olive oil or avocado oil? I would say olive oil. oil and vinegar would be a lot on that because okay. you couldn't really use a, an animal fat I'm, I'm getting that. the clarity in right away. Um, But, and I would say any type of, like, leafy thing like that. So you can include Doesn't matter kale, what lettuce. mustard greens, okay. like, all of that kind Get of stuff. Get me in the lettuce family. But, it, I mean. So now three more. I mean, if you looked at calories, like how much lettuce could you eat if you were looking at calories? But you still would have like no nutrient density. We might be and right back I think, here. I think that if you ate 4,000 calories of lettuce, you'd still be hungry. I just do. We'd have to see it to know. <laughs> okay, but so let us know in the comment section, what are some other things that we could put on this? Maybe we'll do this again. Maybe we'll incorporate it as just vlogs instead of like a five day kind of thing. Spin the wheel. We can do like a spin the wheel vlog. Spin the wheel and whatever shows up, we've got to eat that that day. I Maybe love it. Maybe we can do it a spin the wheel. Um, like you got to eat that for th that one food for, th oh my gosh, we got liver for three days in a row. Woo! Uh, that would be pretty bad. But what are some other ways? I spent 40 bucks on this thing. How we need to we get our this? new set. So what are some what other things that we could do with the Wheel of Misfortune? And we'll do it. Any final thoughts on this challenge? We love you and hope that you take some time. And sometimes don't take us serious. 
to enjoy your keto journey. Sometimes yeah. you need to make a game of it. Sometimes you just need to make something, you know, laughable instead of being like, you know, having eyes on like, this is what I hate, you know? Like we focused on the fun of it. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look in some of the videos we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent videos. I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we spin the wheel, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.